Hey, I'm Lucy Moon, and this is Nothing to Wear, a series in which we take a deep dive into someone we love's wardrobe. Our first episode is with Anna Newton, also known as the Anna Edit. Anna is a content creator and author of An Edited Life, a guide to streamlining your life at work and in your home. <laughs> so Anna. Yes. <laughs> so Anna. Hi. <laughs> I want to talk about your style journey from, I say probably like, not the full beginning. From birth. <laughs> <laughs> Literally from birth. But like, what influenced your style when you were growing up? Actually, the Spice Girls. Let's just take it back to there. Spice Girls, for sure. My parents moved recently and I was going through all their stuff, like all my pictures and paintings I'd done at, like when I was younger. And there was actually, it was like the next catalogue. And I'd like drawn it and all of the dresses were very, very Spice Girl. LBDs, things with Union Jacks on, platform <laughs> <Jackson>. trainers. <laughs> But my favourite Spice Girl was Posh Spice. And all I wanted was a little BD, like an LBD, yeah. at the age of eight. So I feel like I've always been drawn to like black, simple things. Then as a teenager, I was all about the hills. Elsie with her little- Oh, the hills. I yes. thought you said like heels and I was like, wow. Lauren Conrad and like the little Chanel bag. and Oh, she was so, so, so chic. I just absolutely adored her look. There are some things that I have blocked out of my mind. Yeah. That's I'm just taken so me chic. really down memory lane. Yeah. There was a like weird thick belt. I feel like- Yes. Accessories like a, like, a, like a weightlifter belt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so then moving into your early twenties, what happened with your style? How did it change? Oh, so we're talking uni, me. Okay. Then, um, very bodycon. Loved a bit of Topshop. They had student discount. Oh my God, of course. It's yes. pre-uni days. Yes. Um, and so I was very into like bodycon on a night out. We all wore very tight bodycon skirts, just like black skirts. They were from H&M. I remember this era. Yeah, yeah, it was like a big sort of baggy t-shirt and again the belts, they were very much a thing. Um, I don't really feel like I've found my style as it is now till maybe like my mid-twenties, so I'm now 30 and I feel like a lot of things haven't changed in the last five years. So there's a couple of things that I would change, like a couple of tweaks I would make, but I'd say overall I would still wear a lot of things I did five years ago. I'm at that point now in the past year and I find it really reassuring that I, I definitely know roughly where my style has gone now. You're like, I found it! Yeah, yes. I think I'm getting that. You're into neutrals. Like, when yes. I see your wardrobe, <laughs> I picture neutrals. Yeah. Why do you think you are drawn to them? It's like, I've just always felt very comfortable in that sort of clothing. Like, even when I was younger, like, I'm thinking back to my outfits I'd wear when I was, like, 16, 17, 18. And it, I, I've just never really been drawn to like loads of colour. Love it on other people, like good for you, not for me type yeah. thing. I think I do colour for occasion wear, occasionally. Um, but I think day to day there's just something so comfortable for me about that. It's like my, it's my safe place, my happy place. I'm happy to do like a red lip or like slightly orangey eyeshadow. I think I experiment more in that sense rather than with my clothing. I like to have a, like a clean, simple palette for the clothing and then jazz it up elsewhere. So there is one exception to this rule. Yes. And it is on your right now. <laughs> a slight leopard print of obsession, I would argue. Oh, yes. When when did it start? It was it was definitely like pre-uni because when I went to university, my work friends hand sewed me leopard print pillows to take to uni with me as like my leaving you gift. You had very good friends. Amazing friends. And like everything they got me like as a leaving gift was leopard print. Um, so it's definitely like late teenage years and honestly for the life of me I can't remember what it was that set it off but for me it is the perfect neutral pattern it's the perfect thing to pair with the type of wardrobe that I've got that's basically quite boring and like black grey white tan navy denim um because it just goes with everything it goes yeah. with absolutely everything I do have a bit of a rule like it's only like one bit of leopard print at a time yeah, I feel like double denim's already a stretch. Double leopard print. Would oh, I do be... love a bit of double denim. I do See, love a bit I, of double denim. I do like a double denim, but it has to be. You know, you have to think about it. Yeah, it's considered. Yeah, it's not as easy to throw together. Double leopard print would take a lot of balls. I occasionally do like leopard print with snakeskin. I have some snakeskin Ooh. boots, and I occasionally do 
have the two, but I have everything in leopard print. Everything. <laughs> in my phone case, my nails currently, and then I've got trousers, mainly shoes. I do like a leopard print accessory, so shoes, and I have a leopard print bag that I just adore. Adore. I feel so happy when I wear it. <laughs> I do feel like this does play back into the Spice Girls because it, <sighs> the origin of so many iconic prints for a lot of us is Mel B. Yeah. That is true. That is true. Maybe it was a Mel B thing. I, I feel like, if anything, it's come from back in the day, I saw a Topshop leopard print fur coat. We're talking like 10, 15 years ago. And it was on my Christmas list and I didn't get it and that's fine. I think I got like a benefit makeup bag instead that my parents had traveled all the way to Crawley to get. So wow. amazing. But I recently discovered the Whistles faux fur leopard print coat. And now I finally have it in my life, like all of these years later. But that was a journey for me to like yeah. find that piece. And I think it's just been on my mind for all those years. Maybe that was what sparked it off. But I do find that when you have some kind of like earlier on experience with a particular thing that you don't get access to or you think about for a long time, it will haunt you for a really long time. In terms of clothes, I don't know why. There are those pieces that got away. Yeah. And I think that, for me, was that piece that just... And I never, ever found the right fit, the right... I'm very particular about my leopard print. It has to be, like, a certain sort of tone. Like, I'm not into anything that's too yellowy or too tight. It has to be, like, the right <laughs> size of print. I'm very particular. I'm very particular. You know when you know. It's true. I think we should move on to... Not quite your wardrobe, but another Ooh. part of your room that I'm kind of curious about. Oh, yes. Your chest of drawers. These? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Until I visited, I did not know you had a chest of drawers. Tell me, what do you keep in there? Okay, so this chest of drawers is basically split down the middle. So this is Mark's top drawer, and this is my top drawer. And in here, I keep, like, daily bits. Because I read Marie Kondo a couple of years ago and she unpacks her bag every single day. And I was like, what is that craziness? That is crazy. But actually, I do unpack my bag every day. So in here I keep, this is my Loewe puzzle bag. Oh, but I keep it in here and then I've got all like the bits and bobs that I put in it. Like the tote bag, my purse. My camera, this is the, Oli oh my word, the Olympus Mu 2. <gasps> I, honestly, everyone's photos from this camera come out gorgeous. Oh, it's like a dream. It does all of the hard work for you. I love every single photo that I take on that. A tampon, Barocca, IBS medication. You're smart. <laughs> See, this is the thing. I forget my um, Busker fan and like Rennies and stuff, which unfortunately I do need. There you go, put it in a little thing. I love that you keep your in-use film canister in here as well. Yeah. I always have a spot for my in-use one so I don't ever lose it. So this is my baby. And this is the Chanel wallet on a chain that I bought when I was semi-drunk in Nice. Fun fact. Here you go. Oh, it's so cute. Every time I think about what I want, ultimately, I want a Chanel wallet on chain or the small, like, classic bag. Because it's just so simple i mean it is tiny it is literally a wallet on a chain i think i could fit my olympus in there yeah i could, yeah. I could fit my olympus kind of a push that but that's it it is like cards your phone your lipstick well, that's it like that's yeah. the end of it but if i'm going somewhere fancy this is what i wear because it just i feel like it makes ev it makes everything look super fancy and it's my baby and i mean i have a few fancy fancy bags um, but not a shed load, but I know that this is one I would never sell, never get rid of. Like, hopefully I have a daughter that likes Chanel. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought the Loewe puzzle bag would be much bigger than it is. This is the first time I've seen one in the flesh. Oh, and interesting. And actually like, I prefer this proportion to what I envisioned in my head. So I think this is the small one. They do do a medium one, um, but I feel that looks a bit more like a bowling bag. And they do do a tiny one. And this is the, in the middle one. I think this is called the small lower way puzzle bag. I saw it on Lizzie and Lindsay, um, like Ropes of Holland and Shop from the Street. And we were having dinner one time and they were like, try it on. <laughs> so I did, I fell in love. But at the time they didn't sell any that had gold detailing on. And I'm very specific with gold detailing. And then they started to sell this colorway, which is a navy leather, um, but the straps are black. Oh my God, I really like that detail. It's like a mix of all my favorite neutrals, like in one and with gold detailing. And I love how you can just take off the chain and then I wear it like that quite often. Semi-fancy bag. Not sponsored by Loewe. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> 
and then I can wear it like that. Or I can do a little over the shoulder number. I love this bag. Yeah, two years old and I feel like it still looks good. Yay! <laughs> no one ever goes in this drawer. This is like exclusive content. <laughs> and then in terms of everything else, I've got bedding and then this is my big drawer that has like beauty stuff in, kind of beauty tools. And then this is like Mark's big drawer for, I mean, his drawer is very heavy. I'm, I can't even open it. <laughs> okay, let's go to your wardrobe. Ooh. So I know these are relatively new wardrobes. Yes. Walk me through how you chose the structure. Okay, so firstly, our lovely carpenter, Caleb, um, asked if we wanted one that went all the way to the ceiling, and I said absolutely yes, because I cannot bear to dust the top of a wardrobe. It was my least favorite task in here. Um, so originally we had IKEA wardrobes here, and they were really good. They lasted us like four years. They were roomy, but we have a lot of space and so we wanted something that was quite high so i do have some extra bits of clothing in the loft this isn't every single piece of clothing that i own i have some occasion wear under the bed as well some high heels under the bed but this is my like winter sort of into spring wardrobe um so i have all my hanging bits here i have like dresses jackets shirts my one and only skirt which obviously is leopard print um, and then i have Three different shelves of knitwear here. The knit, I love a knit. <laughs> I've got more of like a semi-medium knit and then I've got like big chunky knits on the top. Um, I've got jeans and trousers here. I don't actually own a shed ton of jeans. I sort of know what I like and that's that. And then behind I've got white t-shirts and black t-shirts. That's pretty much it. Then I've got all my shoes here, boots. I mean, mainly everything is boots because it's like the winter. I've got a bag here. This little bag is more of a summer bag, but it's got like my gloves. It's so cute. <laughs> and then underneath here, I've got, this is pajamas and underwear. And this is my workout gear. Ta-da! So as the internet knows, you have a capsule wardrobe. What led you to the capsule wardrobe journey? So the capsule wardrobe was something that I started probably like four or five years ago now. And it was more out of necessity and like lack of space. And I found loads of things online. I did a Google, I found this amazing website called Unfancy, um, which is ran by women called Caroline Joy. And she did this like, I think it was 37 pieces capsule wardrobe, 38 pieces capsule wardrobe. Really got into that idea of having like less clothing, less fast, like things being really quick in the morning to get ready. That was like a step too far. So now I do more, of, I, I, don't, I don't have a number that I'm aiming towards. It's more like, let's just keep seasonal clothing in here. Let's try not to buy too much new stuff. Let's like re-wear the stuff that I've already got, repair stuff that I've already got. And then at the end of each season, I have a little rejig. I take my stuff out of the loft and sort of go through and update it. Um, and it's just a fun little experiment that hopefully has stopped me spending so much on clothing throughout the years. Although, hmm, whether it actually <laughs> works that way. Not too sure. As you probably well know. And as I know now too, because you inspired me to start my own capsule wardrobe and document the journey. Love it. It is a very contentious topic, what counts yes. as a capsule style. Oh, all the time. How yes. do you how do you deal with commenters either saying you have too much stuff, too little stuff? It's such a tricky one. And yeah, I get comments all the time that are like, that's that's not a capsule. I'm like, no, I guess it's not in terms of a really small edited, if we're talking like 20 pieces of clothing, I've got double, triple that here. So it's not a capsule in terms of like numbers, the numbers game. I think it's so different for everyone. Ultimately, I work from home. This clothing here is stuff that I wear like day to day. Whereas if you're in an office, you're gonna have more of like an office wear wardrobe and then things that you wear out of work. So. It's such a personal thing and it is just gonna be different for everyone. But I found this setup that works for me of just having, I mean, it's a decent sized wardrobe, but it's not absolutely huge. And so it is nice just to have, it's more of a seasonal capture wardrobe. That's how I look at it. And it is just there to ultimately help me make decisions about clothing quicker. And also being able to see all your clothing. I feel like I buy less because I know what I've got. It's never like, oh, where is that one? thing gone, I don't know where it is. Like you can see everything. I think that's that's really important. Let's see this whistles like a print coat. Okay. How long have you had this guy? I've had her for oh it's either a year or two years. I mean just look. This is the ultimate. Oh my gosh, it's I gonna miss. be double leopard print. <laughs> Ignore the leopard print trousers and also the nails. <laughs> 
I was so happy, I found the one, I finally found it. it. Took me 15 years, but we got there eventually. This is maybe the fun part of the video. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna have a look and pick out three outfits that you would pick as your classic go-tos for specific events. Is it all right if we see them on? Oh yeah, fashion show, fashion show, fashion show at lunch. <laughs> the first one is your everyday uniform. Everyday for me is such an easy one. It's always like something like a jean, preferably with a bit of stretch, something that feels comfortable. Um, these are from T by Alexander Wang. Um, I saw Monique had these and they were in the sale. It's like, yes, thank you very much. So something like this on the bottom half, then I'm just absolutely in love with these boots. I never thought I was cool enough for chunky boots. I was like, way too cool for me. But I love like a chunk, they're, they're so comfortable. They're comfortable, they're practical. It's raining, it's cold. You want something that's gonna be sturdy on your feet. Then on the top half, I do like more of a thin knit, like something that's not too heavy. I'm, I'm a sweaty hot girl. Um, so my chunky knits are reserved for very chilly days. Um, this top is from And Other Stories. It's like a thin nice. wool knit. I think it's three years old now. It's last, lasted really well. So something like this on the top half. And then my go-to jacket I've had for four years, it's from Whistles, and it's just like a black pea coat. But whenever I put it on, I feel fabulous. I put it on and I feel like a boss. I'm like, yes. It's a real like power jacket for me, but also like not too dressy, like quite casual. So I'd say all of these four things together, my everyday winter uniform. Combat boots in winter. Yes. What's your sock game like? Do you pull them up so that they Create, they have no gaps between the like jean and the boot beginning. Does your boot cover the jean? Or do you wear something that's low and then you have a bit of ankle? I love this question because I did an IGTV where I put on my combat boots without socks and there was like every single comment was about that. It's like, guys, you can comment about something else. Everyone was very, very upset by it. I was taking on and off like a million different outfits and to make things quick, I didn't wear socks. I will never do that again. And every IGTV you. will see me like panning down to my socks. Um, like we've got the hot goss now. Yeah, we have, there you go. <laughs> Online Ex exclusive. Exclusive. Anna does wear socks. <laughs> For me, it's a temperature thing. If it's really, really cold outside, I'll just wear like black socks or gray socks and pull them all the way up, like basically to my knees if I'm cold and I don't want a breeze going on there. If it's a little bit more temperate outside, I'll do like an ankle sock and I'll do bare leg. We've just had Valentine's Day. Yes. What did you or would you pick now for a Valentine's, or like a, not even a Valentine's date night, but just date night? Date night. Um, my Valentine's Day was spent with our couple friends. So we did like a little, just everyone came around and had food and it was lovely. I can't remember exactly what I wore, but my go-to date night outfit, easy peasy, this. It's from And Other Stories again, and it's their leather belted mini dress. I love a mini dress. I feel like this is actually very posh spice. I think this has the right amount of sexy in it. Gorgeous, buttery leather, fits like a dream. Um, I've worn it as a jacket, I've worn it as a long shirt, I've worn it as a dress, like, I've honestly got so much wear out of it. So I would wear this, and then the Heist Studio tights cost a small fortune, but are delightful. Really? So they approached me to send me some, and I genuinely thought, what could we, what, why? I'm a little judgmental, I really like. MS tights, they are my favourite. Look good. at the thickness of the waistband, is oh, how wow. thick the waistband is. So you don't get any of that like weird cutting in. So comfortable, have washed really well. These are the 80 denier, but I think I'm gonna get some sheer ones as well, because I think that would look Ooh. really, really nice with this dress. For shoes, I'll go for one of two. Uh, these are the Dear Francis Spirit Boots. And can we just take a moment for the gold detailing on these? I mean, that's this pure very nice. <laughs> I just groaned, like they are gorgeous. A little bit too high is an everyday boot for me. They're definitely more of like a date night taxi boot. These are what I go for more often. Um, I really like these, they're from Ganny, they're the Cali boots. I mean, they're, they're wild, like they're pretty okay. out there. And I love how the ankle opening is like a little bit bigger than my ankle, so they're not as tight on the ankle. It's just very yeah. flattering. Something that some people will probably be worrying about is the fact they've got a wedding soon. Oh yeah, wedding's it's tricky. A weird season for mm -hmm. it. Like we're ready for our summer weddings, but are we ready for our spring weddings? What would you wear to a spring wedding? 
this is very much like on my brain because some of my best friends are getting married in April and it's early April so it has the potential of being pretty freezing. So I feel like you can go for something a little bit more summery um, but here you go, this dress is from Gani. I think I bought this about three years ago and this is like the magic dress. Um, this it's, is beautiful. It's universally flattering with the wrap. Um, it's got like a bit of a slit on the leg, but not it's too quite much. a sexy cut across here. Agreed. Um, and it is freshly dry cleaned because my friend borrowed it for a wedding that she went to. This is the universal dress. Um, I actually run Anna Newton's occasion wear rental hire out of <laughs> the drawer from under my bed. All of my friends have worn it. We're all different shapes and sizes and heights and everything, and it just works for everyone. <laughs> The heels are the Carry Leather Slingbacks by by far. So these are like the nude, then I've got the black, then I've got the red. And that's it, I own these three pairs. I own my wedding shoes, which are leather print obviously, and that's it that's for high heels. Thank you so much for being in this video, Anna. It's been oh. so good and being the first guest on Nothing to Wear. I've really appreciated. Thank you for having me. your wardrobe. It's been so fun. Where can people find you? People can find me at the Anna Edit. I'm the Anna Edit on everything. And I have a book called An Edited Life with more like capsule wardrobe stuff if you're interested in that. Amazing. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a high, like. Next outfit. I feel like I'm the boyfriend in the changing room. Like, oh my goodness, <laughs> see?